Hello everyone, it's me Jingles, and welcome to my last video of 2022. Um, good riddance, am I right? I am a little bit sick right now, so I sound a little bit weird, that's why, but no worries, it's just a cold. Anyways, this is probably one of like the most requested video ideas I've gotten. When people come to me for help on Discord, this is like all that I'm getting. So I'm finally making a tutorial at it. This is hue shifting. So the first question or thing that we're going to be going over is what is a hue? Um, and you might just think it's a synonym for color, but in this art context, it's something slightly different, more specific. Um, this is just a random skin, kind of ignore it. Uh, we're going to look over here though, uh, right here at the hue, saturation, and lightness. A hue, pay attention to this wheel, is the actual color that uh, the value that you're using is. Is it red? Is it orange? Is it green? Is it blue? Whatever it is. And you'll see how when I change the hue, this outer this outer circle thing is moving. And nothing's happening in this middle square, like this is not moving at all. Only the outer circle is moving, um, which is like the color. Like I said, like this is red, this is blue, this is green, and we're just moving the hue. Saturation is very, um, this is like a very kind of bad ex explanation but it's I like to refer to it as how colory is the color like for example if you move the saturation only you're going from like a black gray color to all the way the hot pink over here if we move if we move the wheel over here you're going from like dark colorless to super bright yellow how colory is your color and then lastly we're getting lightness and darkness is your color black or is it white is it really light is it really dark uh, and that's the diff difference over here. So once again, what we're focusing on is hue. Is it green? Is it blue? Is it yellow? What color is your value? Now that we actually know what hues are, we're going to be talking about why do you even like want to hue shift? Why is this important? And to do that, I'm going to be showing you guys some examples and non-examples. Example number one. We're going to be focusing on the hair for this part just so we don't get everything complicated. Um, this is brown hair, obviously. I've gathered some examples of brown hair. Take a look, study it hard. That's example number one that I made. Example number two, same thing, brown hair. And example number three. And now we're gonna look at a non-example. Let me just grab some random skin. Okay, so this is literally just some random skin I found from latest. Absolutely no hate to this person. I'm just using you as an example. This is a non-example. Again, only focusing on the hair. Let's compare one more time. Non-example, examples and not example. Which one looks better? Just in pure terms of color. I'm hoping that you said one of these three and I'll tell you why. It's because of hue shifting. When we talk about hue shifting, we're talking about, like I said earlier, moving this outer wheel right here. And we wanna do that because it creates more realistic color values. We're focusing on naturally lighter hues and naturally darker ones. Like yellow, as you might realize, is a lighter color than red. Green is a lighter color than blue. Pink is a lighter color than purple. And we're gonna use these principles to our advantage. So let's take a look at these skins here. Here, I'm gonna just bring one, I'm gonna bring one into the editor. All right, let's focus on just the, the browns here in the hair, like don't care about the flowers or anything. Um, here's my color picker, it'll tell me exactly which color I'm using is. Uh, let's start with the darkest one. Look, we're in the pinks. We are in the pinks, almost even the purpley zones, and you get a nice brown that looks like this. When I made my colors lighter, this is the next lightest color, notice what happens out here. It moves towards red because of what I just said earlier. Purple is a naturally color darker than red. And when I wanted to pick a lighter, a lighter value, I moved the wheel towards the naturally lighter colors. Same thing. So this is the color we just had. I made it even lighter it went more towards red. I made that one even lighter, lighter. It goes more towards red again. And we're even heading into like the orange territory over here. Same thing over here on this side, which is just slightly different. You start here um, in like the pinky red zones. And then when you get to your lightest color, boom, you're all the way in the orange. Now let's look at the example or the non-example rather of this random skin. When you look at this skin over here, you take the darkest color. Uh, here we are in like the orangey zone. And I'll just jump right to the lightest color absolutely no change the only thing this person changed um was like the saturation and the lightness and darkness factor that we ta talked about earlier they completely ignored the hue shifting which is fine like every single beginner does this i did it myself too um but that's why i'm teaching you how to make your skins pop today 
All right, so now, how do you actually do this? You get the principle that you wanna make the colors darker with the outer wheel, but how do you know when to go which direction, what's happening, all of that? What do you do with this middle part? I will tell you. Um, let's start off with an easy one. I really like the pink into purple. I think that's pretty easy to do. So we're gonna start with that. You start with a pink. You pick any color of pink you want. I'm just gonna go with this pink right here. Um, and you slap it down. Purple is the naturally darker color for pink. You can just like kind of think of it in your brain. I mean, there's no like exact formula. Like you can tell that like yellow is lighter than red or uh, blue is, is darker than green. Um, but I'll just tell you, pink is a naturally lighter color than purple. You have your starting cue right here. Let me zoom in for you. One important mistake that a lot of people make, it's actually a stylistic thing too. Like certain styles are more extreme than others, but in my style, you don't want to move it that much. Um, like in the outer wheel. Like I started from here, I don't want to go all the way over to here, that's just way too extreme. So you start from where you are and you just you just give it a little bit. You move a little bit um, and you can always adjust on the outer wheel. You can't just do that most of the time because that look, that looks the same. If you're working with darker colors, like we'll get into a second with the blues and purples, you can honestly just move this outer part and it'll work for you. But with pinks, you have to actually move the inside as well. When you're getting towards a darker color, you want a darker color, you want to go down into the right, so something like this. That even might be too extreme. It depends. This is just like a coloring coloring example. There, you got a darker color. Next, you move it towards purple again, and you do the same thing. And you can do it however many times you want. Although it starts to look weird, if you'll notice, if you keep going like super far into like the blues, um, because after you get to a certain point the hues will actually start getting lighter like if you pass this threshold like over here and you start getting over here um blue is actually a naturally lighter color than purple so the hue shifting won't necessarily work anymore in that way however this is just a basic basic principle um uh, let's look at purple and blue now because i talked about that you start with a blue let's call it over here to make it darker, you want to move more towards purple, which is over here. With blues, be careful, don't move that much because, as you can see, it already got darker. With the pink over here, you could barely tell, but this one already got darker. So you only want to move the inner circle or inner square a little bit. Do the same thing again. Be careful not to give it too much because it gets dark. Like it gets dark so fast. And once again, if you go too far, you'll start getting into the pink area, and pink is lighter than purple, so it'll start looking weird. But please feel free to play around with the colors however much you want. All right, I'm not gonna go into depth with any of these other ones, but I'm gonna show you every single color combo, like red into orange, green into blue. I'm gonna do all that for you on uh, high speed. And now you might be wondering, what if I want to get my orange to a pink? What do I do then? And that's when I'll tell you to go watch my ombre hair tutorial. This does not only apply to hair, like you can do this with clothing or you should actually do this with clothing as well. Um, but it's just helpful to realize the properties of these colors. Like if you want a darker color, you can like realize that you don't always have to move this inner part, just make you like a really good use of the outer part as well. Um, Anyways, this probably wasn't the best explanation. I am not an expert on the color theory or anything. Like, this is all from my own brain and like what I have seen. Like, if you want a professional tutorial, please go look one up. I'm sure there's lots of like art classes and um, color theory tutorials on YouTube that are way better than this one. This is just like beginner for skins. Here you go. This is really all you need. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you enjoyed and that this was helpful to you. This is actually probably one of the harder techniques in skinning. Like, this is the thing that I learned the latest, actually. Um, but once you master this, I'd say you should go on to, like, ombre stuff like I was talking about before. Um, because that's also really useful. You can, like, combine these two kind of color theory components together and have really, really, really skillful coloring.